My name is Josh Burns, and today I'm going to be covering the basics of mask animation with Element 3D. I'm going to be going through some of the limitations and some of the workarounds that I found when animating masks with Element 3D. So let's get started. To start off here, I've just uh, done a simple animation using masks, just a little ball dropping and bouncing a bit. So nothing too crazy, but uh, the principle that I'm going to be showing you here it can be applied to any type of animated mask. So I'm just going to start off by adding an element layer. At first, I'm going to go through some of the hurdles that you come across when animating with masks in Element. So I've added my layer, it's custom layers, and now I'm going to extrude it. And here it is, kind of just a uh, disk here. Now, when you first do a RAM preview, you can see how well masks animate. Nothing happened. Okay, so first things first, you want to have... Uh, you want to get this animation that you've done translated across to Element. So, first things first to do that. Basically, with Element, if the scene is stationary, if there's no camera movement, if the object itself isn't moving, then Element is sort of built for speed. So, it's, you know, sort of built in a way, I'm guessing, that has decided, well, if there's nothing going on, I don't have to redraw. So, there's a few workarounds for this. Some people say have your object moving slightly or have, you know, the camera moving slightly. Personally, what I like to do is either go to the point of interest of the camera or the position, doesn't matter, and I add a wiggle, but like just the slightest wiggle, like 0 0.001 and then also point zero one. So this is going to be a wiggle that is so subtle that it's not going to be seen, but if you do a RAM preview now, you can see now actually the mask animation is happening, uh, not as desired, obviously. So the next thing is we have to get this sort of shape to translate properly and, and seem like it's moving because the mask is you now it's stationary it's not really moving it's just sort of scaling a little and the reason for that is element sort of normalizes the shape since it's not really built to support animated or changing objects if it's scaling here so this animated object it's changing what element does is it normalizes the shape so it fits it into this sort of bounding box just to give you an example i'll uh just draw a new solid here pretty blue and just make it slightly opaque and now when you see the animation happen it's not going to leave this bounding box so even though it's squashing and stretching and doing all this stuff and it should be moving, it's not because it's sort of held in place. It's normalized to this shape, this size that, it, that it's been dictated to be. So the way to get around that is to draw what I call registration marks, sort of a way to redraw the bounding box. And uh, there now, if we go into the layer, you can see these two boxes, uh, they're kind of huge. And that's because, again, it's normalizing to that shape, or to the, to the new size. So the easiest way to correct that that I found is the bevel scale on the extrusion uh, level here. Not on the actual texture itself, but on the extrusion model. So we just scale that back and get it closer to the original shape that I had. Okay, and here, obviously, it's... Uh, a lot smaller now, but the other the nice thing about using a wiggle as opposed to having your camera slightly moving or something like that with a keyframe is you can move the camera around, it's still going to reference, it's still going to do that redraw that it needs to do to get that uh, animation across. So now I'm just going to do a little bit of a camera move, just sort of orbit the uh, bouncing thing here, and I'm making sure that these two boxes are in the scene so that we can sort of illustrate how much of a pain they can be. The little registration marks here are showing up and they're being, you know, a nuisance. So I've tried a bunch of different ways to, you know, get rid of these. Uh, I've done stuff with the actual, the camera cutoff, um, uh, track, uh, track mats I've done, like uh, dupli duplicating the layer and using a track mat. Uh, 
masking it out. Um, there's lots of different sort of ways, but the best way that I found is actually to go in and duplicate this and then delete the animated version. So you just have a new solid with these two registration marks. And I just call it knockout because that's what it's going to do. It's going to knock these guys out. So then you go into the element layer and add that model and then just duplicate this extrusion. And then when you go down into the custom path, you just choose the second one and then everything's set up the exact same. So here these guys are. Now you want them to sort of cover them completely. Right now they're the exact same size, so it's not gonna be it's not gonna work quite like how how it should. So I'm just gonna scale them up a bit using that bevel scale. So they're a bit bigger, but then their outer edge is going to be that same bounding box. So I'm gonna just enlarge it in the transform here, and that should hopefully cover it up. Make sure they're both um, group one, and then set this one to match shadow. And so what that'll do is just cover it up completely and you won't see it. So, All right, so I scale it up a bit too much here. You can see that they're getting cut off, but not quite enough. So I'm just going to scale that down. I think it was 102 will probably be good. All right. So there they are. They're now cropped out, or they've been eliminated from the scene. And that's... Uh, pretty much the basics of animating with masks. Um, some examples of, of stuff that I've done is uh, on my vault video, the uh, door opening that was done with masks. Uh, I've done uh, also this walking robot uh, sort of test sequence. That was a bit painstaking because basically <clears throat> I'm animating each part like of, of the robot leg with masks. So. Um, if anyone's ever tried ro rotating a square with masks, you know it, it, it's not pretty. It just kind of scales it down and then scales it back up. So, I mean, it's kind of like doing, you know, frame by frame animation. This is a quick way to sort of get some pretty cool results. And I mean, really, this is a super basic animation that I'm doing here, but you can do some really, really cool stuff. Some things to keep in mind, though, uh, if you're going to be... Uh, using very rounded uh, bevels and that sort of thing, it can cause problems because it'll look good when you bevel it, but then when you go in, if it squashes or stretches too much, and you can have some, you know, some clipping in of your models and stuff like that. It would be great to have uh, animated masks become, uh, you know, a supported feature, or or even you know, shape uh, layers as well. Because uh, you have some more options with shape layers for how to animate them. So, I mean, that would be something that would be pretty cool as well. All right, so there you have it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And for those who take the time to subscribe to my channel, like, share, and favorite my videos, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. This has been Josh Burns. Thanks again. I'll talk to you later.